All right, very special guests on Case It Online here today. We have CJ Nolan, uh, a very recent offered uh, K State offered um, guard, small forward out of Texas. And Belvis Nolan uh, played for K State in the 90s. Thank you guys so much for coming on today. I mean, I, I, can't, I can't explain it enough. I mean, I've had these Zoom calls before, but this is probably one of the cooler ones I've had. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So first, CJ, let's start with you. And just uh, what was it like to get that offer from the Wildcats? And what do the Wildcats mean to you, knowing your dad, you know, is a legacy there? Well, I knew I knew that um, they knew who I was. And they started recruiting me. And I was like, man, that would be a great place to play, knowing that he played there. And, you know, that, that just being a legacy, that – you know, that would, that would be a dream. It's a dream to a lot of people. So I'm just glad I had that opportunity. And then for you, Belvis, uh, what, what was it like to see your son, you know, get that offer from, from the place that, you know, you, you, you shared, you know, two years of playing basketball at? Right. Well, listen, for me, first of all, I mean, CJ has earned everything he's got. I don't think it's because I went there. I think he's done an excellent job. And he's earned the opportunity to uh, gain that uh, scholarship offer from K-State. But for me, I mean, like any dad that's an athlete and played sports, and you know, they want their kids to be able to go and do their own thing. But, you know, he's taken the path that I've had, you know, and he's playing basketball, and he's become pretty well, done real well at it. But at the same time, it was exciting for me and my wife because my wife also attended K-State and graduated from there. That's where I actually met her in Manhattan. So, again, for us to have uh, experienced that process, it was great because as a family, uh, we know how wonderful and how K-State was to us and Manhattan, you know, the memories that we had there. It was just great uh, to uh, see him get that offer. No doubt. So let's get back to K-State in a second. But first, I do want to um, ask, you know, CJ about, you know, your, your recruitment and stuff. Because last year, you know, you were a little under the radar, but Rivals obviously finally took notice of you and your skill. And now you're in the Rivals 150 for 2021 class. Talk about that rise and uh, just, you know, your ability as a whole. Well, like you said, last year I wasn't, you know, under, I was under the radar, but it's, it's just a blessing. You know, I thank the Lord that he got me to this point, and it's, it's, it's a blessing. Uh, yeah, it's a blessing. Yeah, so what other, what other schools are in the mix with you? I mean, obviously you still, I mean, still a long way to go, I assume, until you, you want to make a commitment, unless unless you want to make one right now, of course. It's all, that's always an option. <laughs> but, yeah, just talk about your recruitment with the different teams coming in and stuff like that. Well, um, you know, I, I would like to make a, a commitment by early, you know, next year before the season starts. And K-State is definitely, definitely an option, definitely top five, top three choice right now, you know, with um, SMU and Houston and some other schools that are recruiting me, but I love K-State. K-State, K-State is definitely an option. And then, Belvis, for you as an outsider, you know, looking into your son's recruitment, what, is, what has it been like to see your son rise up in the ranks? And, I mean, you know, you talk about Houston, SMU, K-State, he's probably going to see some more high major offers coming in soon. We, we are enjoying the process. My wife went to K-State as well. We know how much K-State meant to us. And the memories we, you know, had there at Manhattan, we're all excited about it, but like I was saying, at the end of the day, but the decision will be CJ's. He will have to be the one to make the decision and figure out which place yeah. where he fit best. Because at the end of the day, he's the one that has to be there and go through it, you know. So we're just no enjoying the process, my man. No doubt. So what is what is I, I do gotta ask about, you know, the world events going around with the quarantine. What has that been for you like for you guys with the recruitment and uh, everything else? You know, it's obviously been a crazy time. On a personal level, you know, for us as a family, I mean, we've been spending more time together, you know, and it's kind of hard to, to be at this time in life and to experience this type of, you know, world changing, you know, crisis. But we are, we're, we're maintaining. Um, CJ is working out still. We're doing some stuff here at home. He has a bike. He's trying to keep and maintain the conditioning level. He does his ball handling drill. We get shots up. Um, Actually, this other day, we just finished putting up a new goal. So he's been getting it a lot of time. But, again, you know as well as I do, there's nothing like actually being out there on the floor playing, running up and down and having that contact. But we're doing the best we can. We're just praying for the safety for the country and everybody and our families and yours as well. Just, you know, get through this uh, pandemic and try to make it, you know, 
back to some form of normalcy. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, and then CJ, uh, just talk about your game. I want to, I want to hear from you, like what you, what you do well on the floor, what you need to work on still, and just w what you think you can bring to the next level. Uh, I think the biggest thing I do well is, you know, getting my teammates more involved more than anything, just getting everybody there, you know, there, what, just, just putting everybody in good use, you know, if somebody mm -hmm. can shoot, I hit him in the corner, he'll make it. He'll hit, a, he'll hit the three. Or if, if somebody's good at, you know, driving, getting those, you know, something to get somebody on the team going. And so I like the ability that I can score as well in the inside and kind of create my own shot down there. And the biggest thing I work on to say is probably my, um, my leadership, you know, and my conditioning. Those are the mm -hmm. two things I need to work on. Is Coach Lowry the one that uh, has been your main, your lead recruiter? Is that right? So what are your thoughts on that staff as a whole, specifically Coach Lowry and, and Coach Weber? Uh, Coach, Coach Lowry is great. You know, he's a great recruiter. He sends you stuff on uh, K-State all the time. He always calls and checks up on me, especially during these times right now, during quarantine. Actually, he just yeah. texted me a minute ago. I was texting him, but um, he, he's great. Coach, Coach Weber is great, too. I love – I talked to him the other day for the first time over the phone, but – I, I love the staff. The staff is and then Belvis, for you, what what is your relationship like? Obviously, you know, back when you played, it was a completely different staff and team and right. stuff like that. Now you got Coach Weber and the crew. Well, you know what? I, I had the pleasure, and uh, CJ too. We had the pleasure of being able to come down last summer and visit the campus, and we also played there at Coach Weber's uh, team camp, and uh, we did pretty well. I think we won the whole thing, but. At that time, I had the opportunity to actually meet Coach Weber and his staff and talk with those guys. You know, I already knew about the K-State life and what it's about. But, you know, so much has changed since I've gone and been there. But at the same time, I think those guys bring a lot of the stuff that, you know, the, the, the tradition K-State staff always want to they, they, You know, harp about the tradition. They harp about, you know, they're trying to get the program to be one of the top in, you know, in the country. And those are the kind of things that I think that makes it different when recruiting kids. You're trying to make sure they understand the tradition and all that comes with that. And, you know, for you to be a part of that, you know, you got to come in and work hard, you know, be greased. You know, we, 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 we recruit high-level kids, and that's what I think CJ brings. He carries a high level that uh, I think Coach Weber his staff can help keep to another level, if that makes sense to you. But at the same time, I mean, it's going to be fun, and I'm enjoying the process. And, and again, Manhattan is Manhattan, but, you know, it's what you make of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no doubt. Uh, so, CJ, you dunking on your dad yet, or is he still dunking on you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't get him excited, okay? Don't get him excited. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean. Wait a minute this time. <laughs> Uh, let's talk. I mean, what what was it like? I want to talk about Belvis. What it was like playing back in the '90s uh, in Manhattan at K State in the Big Eight? You know, completely different conference. Oh my goodness, it was tough, nose tough, rugged. I mean, Big Eight was just different. You know, we were the bad boys at most conferences. That you all know, true. The Big Eight was <laughs> the Big Eight. You were tough. That's just basically what it was, and we were tough. I mean. Our, our, our players, the kid that was there, Coach Altman, who was there, you know, then Tom took over when he left. But just the whole setting of being a part of the Big Eight was great. Never got the opportunity to play in the uh, Big 12, but I think I, I got more out of playing the Big Eight because, you know, the Kansas, the, the, the Nebraskas, the Missouri, all those guys had a real top-notch stellar athlete. And, and, you know, it was fun to be able to compete and play against those guys, you know. Uh, the great ultra tags, the big country, you know, and those guys. Yeah. And, you know, we, we really competed and played well. Uh, not always won a lot, but we still – it was fun being there and, and having that opportunity to compete on that level. It prepared me for a lot of other stuff in life. It prepared and opened a lot of doors for me after mm -hmm. I left K State. You know, even playing overseas, it was just a great opportunity to be uh, had that opportunity to play in the uh, eight at that time. So again, you know, there's some top 
conference like today. Everybody want to say the ACC and all that, and you know, you want to become part of what's hot, you know. And I think back then, K State being part of the Big Eight was hot, you know, being a part of that tradition. So I enjoyed it. It was great. What's I guess uh, we'll get back to CJ in a second. But what's like one of the, one of those memories that sticks out? Just one, you know, that sticks out from that from that time back in those days. When we beat Kansas, when they were number one in the nation, uh -huh. down in Lawrence and down at uh, at uh, I can't even think right now, but it was great to be able to play down there and beat them on national TV, ESPN, Big Monday. So again, those are memories you always cherish, and you know I've talked to CJ about those things, you know, games and. You know, mm -hmm. it was just, it was fun. It was great. And uh, that would be one of my biggest highlights, you know, playing there. And then also, you know, probably going back home when I was uh, there playing against Alabama, my hometown, when we played them in the uh, preseason. Yeah. And I so that was big highlights for me to be able to do that. And, you know, playing the Big A tournament and, you know, playing in Hawaii against mm -hmm. some of those guys and stuff. So, again, there's a lot of memories, but, uh, again, yeah, this probably having the opportunity to play in the big eight was just exciting enough, you know. Was that was that the last time K State beat KU in the fall in Allen Fieldhouse or was it um, my, my I, memories I, it's not the last time because they okay. died in, uh, yeah they died but uh man I'll tell you what that was that was you know what now that I think about it we beat them but I think it was in Manhattan. Oh, but gotcha. I don't think yep. we beat them in. Uh, yeah, and I don't think you may be right. That may be the last time. Uh, we'll have to look that up and see. I'm not sure, but it was still fun and exciting when we did it. But I can tell you that. No doubt. We no only doubt. Manhattan at that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, CJ. Um, I guess just uh, obviously K State fans are really really excited to see the offer. Coach Lowry. I mean, I have a pretty good relationship with him. He says great things about you. And uh, just excited about your future and your recruitment. And I uh, look forward to continue talking to you. But I guess the last thing I want to add, and you, you, you touched on it early, earlier, Belvis. Uh, you know, just talk about CJ. Like, even if you were to pick K-State, you know, this, is, this, was your, this would be your decision. And, not, you know, you know your, your dad's a huge fan and on Twitter and stuff all over about K-State, which is, which is great. But I can see how some fans could look at that and think, oh, he's just going there because of his dad. Talk about that. If that were to happen, obviously we're a ways out to a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Um. It, you know, if I went there, if I went to K State it, and following in his footsteps, I think people would know that you know it, it was better for me to do that. I feel like, um, you know, even that he, even though he played there, I want to be better than him in a sense. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> I want to be a bigger legacy uh, anywhere I go, but. <laughs> it's getting cocky on me now. That's funny. So, yeah, I, I think, um, um, you know, CJ has this thing about he very modest, his personality. He's kind of, he's shy, but at the same time, I know how you feel. You know, you know, I think he kind of liked what he saw. He fell in love with campus. He just liked the environment. And, you know, CJ is from a small town here in Texas, Waxahachie. I mean, we're not but 20 minutes outside of the city of downtown uh, Dallas. But it's still a small town environment, and he's used to that. So I think for him, that kind of like, hey, I can go ahead and still maintain that kind of, you know, countryside of uh, being yeah. away from home and still enjoy the college life. So. For CJ, I think that grew on him, you know, as far as the, the campus and all. So we toured it, and we had a good time there. And, uh, again, the decision will be CJ. Whatever he decides, we're going to support, you know, and, and hopefully whatever decision he made is the right fit for him, you know. Not something because for myself or my wife going to Katie State and attended there, you know, it's for him to experience life and go where he fit and be able to to play and, and be a player, you know, so. No doubt, no doubt. So, yeah, we've, we've had a little bit of connection issues, but I think I think, uh, I think, think we heard most of that answer. And, and thank you guys so much for the time. Belvis Nolan, CJ Nolan, uh, former former K-State player and, and 2021 K-State recruit, Rivals 150 2020, 2021 recruit. Thank you guys so much for the time. K-State Online appreciates it. K-State appreciates it. Thank you guys so much. And we'll talk to you guys well, later, all right? You.
Thank you.